Hello, welcome to the Worldwide Center of Math. And today I'll be go going over this week's advanced knowledge problem of the week. For the full problem and the solution transcript, there will be a link in the description of this video. So, the advanced knowledge problem of the week, this week, was given a 6 by 6 grid of dots. Um, find the number of lines that can be drawn between points where no lines are parallel. Um, which you would imagine is a pretty large number, since there's 36 different dots. Uh, so, let's get started on this. The first thing is to be able to analyze this grid. Uh, and the best way to do that is to put it on a Cartesian grid, where this is the x-axis and this is the y-axis, and all the points are just points on the grid. And we will define two arbitrary points, P1 and P2, as x1, y1, and x2, y2. And the way to find if two lines are parallel is by um, seeing if their slopes are the same. So we're looking for unique slopes on this grid. And we can write out what the slope is between two arbitrary points. It's just y2 minus y1 over x2 minus x1, which is delta y over delta x. Now, if we want unique slopes, we want delta y over delta x to be in its lowest common factor, which uh, mathematically speaking means that we only want slopes where delta x and delta y have a greatest common factor of 1. Now, uh, the next thing we should do is to start breaking this up into different sections. And the first section we're going to look at is uh, positive slopes that are less than 1. So, um, if they are First, we have to restrict delta x and delta y. Now, if you choose just two points at random, let's say if you pick these two, um, you'll see that the smallest that delta x or delta y can be is 1. So, we know they have to be greater than or equal to 1, and by the same reasoning, they have to be less than or equal to 5. And... We also, since we want the slope to be less than 1, we want delta x to be greater than delta y. And so we get this. And what we have to do is start finding pairs of delta x and delta y that satisfy this and also satisfy this. And luckily, there is a function that does that. It is the euler totient function. Uh, and all it does is... Um, if you give it a input, so let's say 3, it'll tell you the number of natural numbers, less than 3, that are relatively prime to 3, um, which is exactly what we're looking for, since we'll just plug in values for delta x into the totion function, and we'll get the number of delta y's uh, that satisfy this equation, which means that we can break we can uh, write this more succinctly as the sum from n equals 2 to 5, since delta x can't equal 1, since delta y would be equal to delta x at this point. So it goes from 2 to 5. So this is exactly the same thing as this. And now we have to look for when uh, the slope is greater than 1. Uh, this is roughly the same thing as this, except that this time we want delta y to be greater than delta x. So if we rearrange this, we get roughly the same thing. What we have to do is we have to find the number of delta x's that work for each delta y. That's the same thing as using the totient function. 
And so it should be clear that there is the same number of unique slopes, less than one, as there are greater than one. And so all we're doing is we're multiplying this number by two. Then to finish off all of the positive slopes, we just have to take care of one more thing. And that is we checked all the slopes that are less than one and all the slopes that are greater than one, but we didn't count the slope that is one. And so we just have to add that extra slope in. And so now we have all of the positive slopes. We have to look at the negative slopes um, for when m is less than zero. And hopefully you should see a symmetry here. Um, if you take any two points, let's say this and this, and you reflect it over this line, you'll get a slope of the same magnitude. So if you have these two points, you'll get this slope. If you reflect it over that line, you'll get this slope. Same magnitude, but this one is negative. Uh, hopefully you'll see that there is, again, the same number of positive slopes as negative slopes. And we can multiply this whole thing by 2 to get the total number of positive and negative slopes. Uh, and there's just one last thing we have to do. We counted all of the different slopes except for the horizontal uh, line, which has slope 0, and the vertical line, which has slope infinite. And the last thing we have to do is add that in. And what we get is this expression, which we can simplify a little bit. We can multiply or distribute the 2 in. We'll get a 4 here and a 2 here. Add these two together, and we get 4. And then we can distribute out the 4 again and get this. And the last thing we can do to simplify this is, uh, if you notice, this sums from n equals 2 to 5, and we skip over n equals 1. However, when n equals 1, the totient function is equal to 1. So we can kind of absorb this one in if we just start from n equals to 1. And the last part of this question was to be able to generalize this question to any k by k grid of dots. And to do that, uh, we just have to see that the maximum uh, difference between x1 and x2 is uh, k minus 1 on a k by k grid. And so we're just summing from n equals 1 to k minus 1. And that is how to generalize it on a k by k grid. And I should probably say that the answer to this question is uh, 40. If you plug in 6 for k, you're summing from 1 to 5. That's 10. Multiply it by 4, and you get 40. Uh, and that is that for, that is this week's advanced knowledge problem of the week. To view more videos on problems of the week, you can click right here. To subscribe to our YouTube channel, you can click here. To go to thecenterofmath.org, you can click right there. And if you're on a mobile device, there's an I in the top right-hand corner of your screen, and you can click that for all the same links. Thank you very much.